So what I'm going to show you today is uh, a game that I haven't seen in many places. I was very, very happy to see that um, not that many people still know about this game. I couldn't find it in my database, which is really nice. I just have it in an old book. And uh, the player with the white pieces is a master who is not very well known. His, his last name is Arnold. And the player with the black pieces is a little more known. He was one of the best Russian Soviet players of the time, his time, the beginning of the, let's say, the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. His name is Mikhail Chigorin. Anybody ever heard of Chigorin? Some of you heard of him? Very good, very good. There's a Chigorin defense and there's a Chigorin variations named after him. Yeah. So let's take a look. What I'm hoping that you will pick up from this game is how to play very actively and how to think a little bit, like I always like to say, outside of the box. We know the value of the pieces, we know what we want to do in a chess game, but sometimes we just have not to be completely robotic. We're not automatic, we're humans, right? We have our mind, we have creativity, we have imagination. We don't want to play just like, like machines. So let's take a look at the opening. <coughs> and we have the two knights defense, right? Now, I want somebody to raise their hand and tell me what is the most aggressive approach from White's point of view to this variation? What is the most active, dynamic way that White can play in this position? Because we know White can play quiet moves. He can play like maybe D3, you know, sometimes he can play D4, which is okay, active, I guess, somewhat. But what is the most aggressive approach? Who could tell me? Adi. Knight to G5. Knight to G5. That is correct. So, in the game, that was no exception. And again, we have to remember that this is a very old game. And in this position, some of you might be in panic because, oh my goodness, there's a very annoying fork. Both the knight and the bishop are attacking the pawn on F7. Can we easily defend that pawn? No. The rook can defend it, the bishop can defend it, the queen doesn't want to defend it, it's too expensive. Those guys are vacationing, right, busy, and nobody can defend it. So the only way, if you don't want to give up material by playing bishop c5, the only way to do it is by playing the move d5. You have to cut off the diagonal of the bishop with the square on f7, the very weak square f7. So now black is the one who's attacking. He is attacking the pawn on e4 twice with his knight and pawn. He's attacking the bishop even more importantly. So the normal reaction is pawn takes on d5. Now many of you might already know, but for those of you who don't know, it's very dangerous to recapture the pawn. Normally when we give up a pawn, we want to just take back. And you might say, hey Aviv, why not? I have a knight attacking it and my queen is protecting it. White only has a bishop defending it. But here white has so much development that he can become very dangerous. If he is in the game, he moved his knight and we'll talk about that. But if he was to take here, yes? Um, you would sacrifice your knight? That is right. This is a great opportunity to sacrifice a piece. Now, I don't want you guys to go every game now giving up your pieces like it's Christmas, right? We want to think of the appropriate time to give away your pieces. So, here we know we want to do knight f7. How many, know, how many of you know what, what this is called? I'd ben? Like to say I want to protest I'm a vegetarian. That's right, he's a vegetarian and that's a hint to the name. Yes? The fried liver attack, yes. Whoa. Takes, queen f3 check, forking the king and the queen, and the king and the queen and the knight, the king and the knight, so the king has to go up the board. How happy is this king to be here? Not, that happy. Not very happy. After knight c3, this is a huge attack. Now you have to use this knight to defend the knight, like this, and this is very, very dangerous. For So not a5. So now the knight is on the rim, attacking this bishop. So the bishop gains a tempo by playing bishop to b5 check. And now black plays another strange move. A move that's really hard for us to understand. But again, this is why I want you to keep an open mind about this class and about this opening. This opening is really, really odd. Instead of just playing, let's say, bishop to d7, blocking the check normally, he plays pawn to c6, which means two things. One. Instead of regaining that pawn that we lost, we're going to give up another pawn. So at the, at the end of this sequence, what is going to be up a pawn? And our pawn structure is going to be really, really funny. So of course, white takes. 
the, the black pawn on c6 forked the bishop and the pawn on d5, so he took it. <coughs> and now we take with the pawn. Of course, we, no, we don't want to take with the knight. If you take with the knight, for example, bishop c4, you remember that problem on f7? Hi, we have it again. But not so. Not so funny, yeah. So we take with the pawn. By taking with the pawn, of course, the knight on a5 doesn't let the bishop go back to c4. And hits that, the pawn is hitting the bishop. Now you will notice how many moves, how many moves of tempo, how much gain of time black is going to get here. Now, there are many variations in line to talk about. We only have limited time, so I'm going to go relatively fast. But I can tell you that in this position, there are other moves. Queen f3 is an interesting move. And bishop d3 is an interesting move, but those are for another time. So in the game he went, bishop to e2, retreating. And white said, I had just about enough of this knight on g5, attacking me, trying to hurt me. So kick back. The knight can go to h3 as well. But of course from h3 it's really not going anywhere. So that's not the most popular thing. But it's still possible. Instead, knight f3, one of the main lines, hitting the pawn on e5. So black says, OK, then I'm going to hit you back. The pawn advances. Notice that white is really dying to castle and develop his pieces. But with every move, there's a threat, and he has to do something about it. So first of all, his bishop was hit. Then his knight was hit. Now again, his knight is hit. Now the knight doesn't have that many moves. I don't think you want to go knight to here, after which g5. Oopsie. What happened to the knight? It's gone. It's gone. It's trapped, yes. So how many of you want to go here where the queen can take it? Not many, right? And knight g1, also very, very unappetizing. Doesn't look fun. So he plays knight e5. Even here, there are lots and lots of moves. Black can play, for example, queen to d4, bishop c5. There's all kinds of moves. He chooses to play queen c7, one of the possible moves developing the queen and already tickling the knight on e5. He wants to take the knight. And that knight doesn't have that many good squares to go to. So he decides to go f4, defending the knight. Now black continues. He goes developing his bishop to d6 again, hitting the knight a second time. And white again responding with d4. So we see that for the sacrifice pawn, black got a lot of time. but it's still going to be a lot of work trying to prove that we have a reason to sacrifice a pawn. Right now we have a funny knight, we have a funny pawn structure, <laughs> right? But we'll see that this is, you'll see how dangerous this position can become. Okay, so now black castles. Finally he gives white the move to do whatever he wants. And white says, okay, that is a good idea. Now the game really, really starts. Until now it was developing, sacrificing a pawn, a little bit of trick, a few tricks in the opening. And now I want some advice from you. Let's pretend that you're black. What move or moves do you have? Let's pretend that you just got this position. Whether you like it or not, that's what you have. So what would you do? I want to hear candidate moves. What ideas might you have? Take a look and think, hmm, OK, I'm down a pawn. Do I really want to trade pieces? Do I really want to play quietly, passively? Or do I want to get? the initiative and try to prove that I have something for my pawn. I agree. Yes. OK. Yes. I like this move. I like this move. As a matter of fact, this move is coming very, very shortly. That's a very smart move. The rook is very sleepy in the corner. And instead, it takes the semi-open file, the half-open file. Yes. That's the, exactly what happened. Excellent move. That pawn was a very weak pawn, very annoying pawn. We don't like it there. What do we do? We use it for the best possible purpose. We are attacking the most important center square. Now I'm positive that most of you can see that if here, if white falls asleep here, he can be punished because black has a threat. He wants to take the pawn on d4. If queen takes d4, Bishop c5, what a beautiful skewer of the queen, right? That's going to be really, really nice if that happens. So white says, no, let me defend my stuff. And the pawn is supporting the center. And now indeed comes the move rook b8. I'm not even going to bother to ask you because somebody already said that. That is a great move. I like moves like this. It's 
activating the rook. The rook is active, and the rook is already looking at this pawn. Can this bishop easily move now? No, no because he's babysitting the pawn. Now, another good reason for this move is that white got an idea. He said, OK, let's see, what can I do? My queen side is undeveloped, but I can develop my rook. It can't even move. I can't develop my bishop. I'm going to lose my pawn. So it's time to develop my knight. Where should I develop my knight? I can either develop it to where I block my bishop, or maybe I can go to a3 with it. And on a3, I'm also going to be threatening a beautiful fork on b5. Can you imagine this knight wanting to go here, attacking the queen and the bishop? That looks really lovely. So he said, OK, knight a3. And now I'm threatening to go to b5. And this is why I'm showing you the game. Because I want you guys to understand that not every time there's a threat, we have to just respond to it like a robot. We can use our imagination. Here, black set a tiny little trap. And white was very, very naive, and he fell right into it. And let me show you what I mean, because it's not so obvious. Here, black simply played pawn takes pawn. That's a good move. We already know that queen takes is out of the question because the bishop to c5, winning it. So he should just play pawn takes pawn. Maybe he was worried after pawn takes pawn that black will take the knight on a3, and then those pawns are really terrible, and black has great game. But I think that he should have done it. He should have played c takes d4. Instead, he said, wait a minute. I have a bigger threat than my opponent. I'm going to threaten his queen, and he's going to have no time to save his pawn. So let me play the move knight to b5. That is a very, very aggressive move. <clears throat> I'm attacking everything. I'm attacking the queen. I'm attacking the bishop. I'm attacking the pawn on a7. I'm attacking the pawn on d4. And my, my knight is protected by my bishop. So now the question is what to do. How many of you think we should just lose our queen? I knew it. One person. <laughs> so, yeah, he has to learn chess. What can I tell you? He's not here yet. He doesn't really belong in this class. That's true. So what should we do? What to do with his queen? Yes. Yeah. Queen to e7, moving the queen away from danger and still protecting the bishop before it gets lost. I agree. Any other ideas? How many of you were thinking about queen e7 here? Anybody else? Nobody else was thinking about it? OK. But I saw other hands up. Who wanted to say something else? Yes? You mean D8, right? D8? Yeah, the same, the same thing. Again, moving the queen to D8, moving the queen away, and still protecting the bishop. But I'm sure that all of you can see that if the queen goes to D8, and I'm going to take the bishop, and you will take, and then my queen will take back the pawn. White is up a pawn in an endgame. And no queens, no knight for this very good bishop. Is black happy in that position? He's down a pawn, plus he just traded lots of pieces. <coughs> Sometimes we have to just use our imagination. When I look at the pawns in the center, the e4 and d4 pawns, I'm saying, wow, those pawns are priceless. They're amazing. I love those pawns. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I was down a pawn, and now I got it back. So material is even for now. Maybe it's time for a little investment. Maybe I'm going to give something, and I'm going to get lots of play for it. And therefore, he did. Who wants to say it? Do you want to say Queen c5, of course, is another option, where the queen moves <coughs> away to safety. And Uh-huh, maybe, but yeah, exactly. That's also true. Queen d8 is even maybe b4, you're right. But here, in any event, black simply solved this problem in a very smart way. Now, when I show it to you, I don't want everybody to just go ahead and do it in every one of your games. It really depends on the position. Here, you will see that it's a justified sacrifice. Bam! Rook takes knight on b5. Some of you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. The rook is worth five, and the knight is worth three. Five is bigger than three. I don't want to give my rook for the knight. And the answer is, well, sometimes you do. In this position, you definitely want to do that. So of course, you had to take back. And another very strong move by black, queen to b6. 
not only is he hitting the bishop and he's about to munch on it, but also he wants to do something with his pawn because this is a discovered attack. Can you all see that? The queen is opposite the king on the diagonal, and when I do something with this pawn, it's going to become a check. So, very, very good. Now we can see that black is getting a lot of, a lot of stuff for that exchange, a lot of free moves, a lot of action. Okay, white decided, well, what am I going to do with my bishop? If I move my bishop to e2, then after d3 check, and the pawn is going to take my bishop. And he wasn't happy about it, so he decided to play the move a4. Now, black played a decent move, but I don't think it was the best move. I think the best move here would have been to play a6, right here, right now. Then the game would transpose. It'll be exactly like what happened in the game, because in the game, black played something that was not accurate, and white played something that was not so accurate. But the best move here is a6. In the game, he went, <coughs> well, what should we do? Well, we already know that a6 is the best move. But if we ignore a6, what else do we have? We want to do something with this pawn on d4. We know that if we do something with this pawn, it's going to be a check. So whatever we do with this pawn, black is going to have to respond, white would have to respond to the check. So what do I want to do with this pawn? Now, this is again a tricky question. Because the first thing we think about, hey, I can take something for free. I can take this pawn and he won't be able to take me back. He's going to have to respond to the check. But here, we don't want to do that because those pawns together are so strong and you're going to see it all the way to the end of the game that there is no way that I'm going to separate them. I don't want to just win a pawn. I already gave up a rook for a knight. So watch what he does. He does check, the king moves to the corner, and now a6. So he basically locks the, the boy back to the bishop and he plays a6. The problem is that now black can sacrifice his bishop for those two pawns. And believe me, that would have been a very good deal. That as good as it gets. This bishop is so clumsy that he should just have taken here and just taken the second pawn. And this is why black should have first played a6 when that pawn was here before he pushed it so that the bishop cannot sacrifice itself. Then he would have to play the move that he plays now, which is not the best move like because sacrificing is the best. He, the bishop cannot move anywhere, so he plays knight c4. In order to try to save his piece, he is moving his good knight from e5. Now that poor knight is trading for the knight on a5. Of course, black is not set to trade this piece because this piece is his worst piece. And that was white's best piece. So that's a very pleasant trade. Of course, we attacked the queen and the knight, so he took it and he took back. Very nice. So we had a series of very interesting moves. And now the big question is how to continue. When we count the material, we see that black is down a whole exchange, a rook for a knight, two points. But if you ask me what color I would want to be, well, guys, it's a very easy question. I would much rather be black. All the black pieces are active. My king is much safer. I have a beautiful pawn duo on e4 and d3. Now, let's see who can suggest the next move. Now, usually what happens in the class, they suggest a move, and then we discuss it, and then they improve on it. Let's see what happens in this class. What should we play? Don't be afraid to be wrong. Try to look at the position, think, hmm, if I was black, what would I want to do here? What would be my choice? Yes. Blue shirt. Yes. Well, you got it right on the first try. Normally, everybody in every class wants to play the move knight g4. Because how many of you know what smothered mate is? Some of you know? OK, let's, let me show you the demonstration for those who don't know. Is that like perpetual check? Almost. Let's pretend knight g4. And let's pretend white plays some funny move just for the heck of it. So we go check, double check, queen sack, must take, and mate. This is smothered mate because the king gets smothered in the corner. So many players, when they see this position, they say, hey, Aviv, knight g4, and we're about to do something, some damage. And I say, well, the idea of knight g4 is a fantastic idea. But before I go to knight g4, I want to improve the position of all my pieces. I don't want just my knight to participate. I'm looking at this guy on c8. Isn't he a sleepy bishop? Yeah. Don't we want to wake him up? So yeah, we want to wake him up. Now, how many of you play Bug House? 
How many of you play bagasse? A lot of you. Okay. Very good. Let's pretend that you got, let's pretend that this bishop is out of the board, hiding. You have it in your hand. Where would you rather, where would you want to put it? Name a square would you want to put it? Like if you can use it right now, what square on the board would you, I know where I want to put it. H8. Very good guess, but no. <laughs> Say it. E2. Bishop on E2, of course, that'll be an awesome bishop. That, isn't that a beautiful place for the bishop? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, who can argue with that? Now, do you think the computer is going to let me play it if I did it? No. It's uh, not bug house. It's not bug house, okay. So, the second best thing is to do it in stages. Step one, attack the queen with a bishop. Now, if you don't do something with the queen, bye-bye queen. So here, white tried to be smart, but that didn't work out too well. He tried to attack the black queen as well. And here, black played the move queen a7. He just wanted to stay on the diagonal. And that wasn't so bad. But he could have done even worse if he would have played queen c5, attacking the bishop, staying on the diagonal, and also the queen can shift to h5. That would have been very annoying. Instead, he played here. OK, do you have a question? Some people play like that, but I think that here we play that you can do anything. You can put any piece even on the last ring. Yeah, even except the pawn. So, except the pawn, that's right. So, all right, so the queen has to move. Now, I'm going to have you, hey, turn around, please. Now, the queen doesn't have that many squares. So, it, between two moves. In the game, he played a very <coughs> funny, moves, uh, funny move. I was really surprised to see the move. Let's see, I'm going to play it. Well, first I'll tell you what the best move is, then I'm going to play it. I want somebody to tell me why am I unhappy with this move. I think the move that should have been played is queen to e1. That's my move. But in the game he went, why am I sad about this move? What do I, what, why do you think I'm criticizing this move? What, what, don't look for moves. I just want you to be, don't look for the next move for black. Just try to tell me in words, what don't I like about this idea of going queen a4? Yes. Okay, that's one thing. The queen is not super active there, but more to the point, I want to hear something very specific. Why is the queen better off on e1 than it is on a4? Because where are things happening? The king, yeah? Um, the queen not as close to the king. That's right. The queen would have been much better off as a defender on e1 mm -hmm. than it is going hunting something on a4. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So now we know the continuation of the plan, bishop to e2. Awesome. And rook e1, trying to keep the rook safe. Now what to do? I definitely want to see more than two hands up. I want you guys to look at the position, concentrate, think to yourself, what can I play in this position? What should I play? How can I continue my aggression? What, how can I be active, aggressive? How can I use my pieces that are not doing something special right now? How can I use them to punish my opponent? Ooh. I'm seeing only two people raising their hands. I want you guys to think about it. Let's see. Okay, let's talk about what we're happy with. Are we definitely happy with the king? I'm not going to get my king running around like, <laughs> right? Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're happy with the pawns. The pawns are exactly where we want them to be. This bishop is as good as it gets on e2. The queen is doing a great job on the diagonal. But can the queen by itself control, do everything? No. The queen needs help. We have to keep this in mind. We haven't used our rook, but where can we go? If we go here, the queen will take it. Here, so what, so what, so what, so what. Nothing exciting happening with this rook right now. This bishop, again, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with it. I can't take anything. I can't improve. How about my knight? Can I improve my knight? Maybe I can do something with my knight? Yeah, what do you think? Yes. Knight G4. Now it's the knight's turn to jump to G4. And we already know what the threat is. Smothered mate. Knight G4, knight H3, queen G1, and then knight to F2 mate. All right, so black says, white says, I need to have some escape square for my king. And he's attacking that knight. He wants to take that knight off the board. Again, black played a very aggressive move here. 
And again, it's kind of thinking ahead. Some of you might say, oh, I can just give a check with the knight. And then I'll say, okay, my king goes here, and then what? Of course, black still looks great, but so what? How do we get more space, more activity, more threats against the poor white king? Because if you look at the king, he looks super alone. All those other pieces, the queen and the bishop and the, the bishops and the rook, they are somewhere, where are they now? Somewhere in, in the Bahamas, right? Vacationing, sailing or something? Yeah. You could play Rook A8 and you have a Baron Very nice. Very smart. However, we'll look for another move. Yes. 93 is a possibility, but I want to ask you a question. Which piece is better? The bishop on C1 that hasn't even moved yet, or my very active knight on G4? Even though they're both worth three, I much prefer the knight, right? Do I want to trade it for the bishop? Maybe not yet, right? I know he's attacking, but again, like I always tell my students in every class and every lesson, if you have a bigger threat than your opponent, don't respond to his threat. Think, do I have a bigger threat? Can I create a bigger threat, improve my position, and make a bigger threat than just him taking my knight? If I have that, then who cares about the knight? Yes, husband. Of course. Queen f2, the queen goes right into the thick of things, attacking the rook on e1. Beautiful, just beautiful. What a great position. Well, what to do now? It's really miserable. It really is sad. You can't even sacrifice because in the game he played here. But I think that if you would have taken here, then I would have played like check, check. Check, does that look good? No. What happens after bishop e3? Checkmate. The white king doesn't look happy, does it? No. So back we go. Bishop to d2. Now again, there are many, many winning moves. Believe me, there's more than one winning move. Let's hear if you can suggest some of them. <coughs> Pretend that you're black. All your pieces are working together, except for maybe one or two. But okay, the rook on f8 is protecting the king a little bit, so that's not bad. Plus, you have enough stuff. You really, really have a lot of stuff. So only one person can find me a move here. <coughs> I want everybody to concentrate, everybody to take a good look. Pretend that you use your imagination. Don't be afraid to play an aggressive move. Look at the queen, the knight, and the bishop. Maybe you don't need all of them for the attack. Maybe you can use some of them. Yes? Uh, move your queen up, move your black queen up one thing. To here? No, to, to the big ball there. Here? Yes. And what if the pawn takes? Uh, the, you're leaving, uh, never mind. Yeah, we, we if we can sack the queen, it could be nice, but maybe not just yet. Wait, actually, no, that wouldn't work. What you said before, how you move? To here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, move here. Okay, so queen here, and you're threatening checkmate, right? Yeah, but uh, on your next turn, yeah. like, move your uh, knight. Your Wait knight. a minute. Who, in chess, how does it go? One move each, right? Whose move is yeah, it now? He, well, let's see. What if I take this knight? Wait a minute. Don't, don't despair yet. Don't take a good look at the position. Take a good look at the position. What can you do to me? You can check me. And that will be my only legal move. And you can check me. Look at this. And my only legal move. And then you'll take it. And... Yeah, so even this works. Yeah. Another good alternative, yeah? Um, pawn E3. Yeah, I mean, pawn E3, I'm sure it's winning material. Yeah, it's a disaster, right? Completely disaster. Uh, probably the best move, maybe bishop F3. Yeah. Also looking really great. If pawn takes bishop, then queen here is mate. Otherwise, we're threatening mate here, and the queen G3. It's just the end of the world. He decided to play the move bishop to C5. Also looking very, very nice. That's the different move order. Now again, he wants to play queen g3 with mate. 
And if you take the knight, it's mate. Look at this knight, queen, bishop, bishop, wow. So many pieces around the king. How many defenders to this king? Not too many. Not good news. So, white is already lost. When he's desperate, he's trying to play a last trick. Bishop takes pawn check. What else? He's about to get mated, so he tries to sacrifice his bishop. And in this position, white played a move that I was really, really surprised by. I think that he played, I'm guessing that he played this move only because maybe he saw what happened in the game and he planned for that. But I think that that was very, very unwise. What would you play in this position? Let's pretend that you're black, you're about to mate your opponent, your opponent just played bishop takes pawn check, we know that he's trying to get his queen into the thick of things, what should we do, Adi? King h8. That's what I would have played. King h8, okay, so you took my pawn, so what, what's next for you? Nothing, right? He's in trouble. But Chigorin, and he was a grandmaster level player, he decided to take this. Very confusing. Really, really confusing. I cannot understand why he did that. Well, he's still winning, obviously. The only reason you'll see is probably what happened in the game. So, check. Why even allow this check? King here. And now, yeah, maybe he should have played queen takes pawn check. But then after g6, he doesn't have any more checks. Black is still winning, but why even get to this position? But he just took the rook. This is what Yasser, our friend Yasser Serwan <coughs> says, die on a full stomach. You're about to get mated, so at least you get to eat whatever you have a chance to eat. Now, who could tell me what black played in this position? Black played something very, very good. I was very impressed. I have to say that when I saw this game, and I went over this part relatively fast, I was like, whoa, what's that? And then when you look at it, it's like, wow. I needed all those hits together, thanks. Yeah? Well, I got it because of your hits. Very good. Yes. I'm positive that this is an interesting move, but remember, before the black king was safe, and now white is threatening all kinds of annoying checks here. Check and more check, it could be a perpetual check. So this is why it's easy to get, because any move that you play here that allows me to check you, and I might just escape. So think of the plan or the move that doesn't allow me to do that. Yes. Yes. Wait, let's take a look. Let's go slow. He sacks his queen on g2. What a beautiful clean queen sacrifice just for one pawn. Well, I know what I have to do. I have to take it. Bishop f3 check. And you have two legal moves, but they both get mated. In the game he played here. And bam, checkmate. Two bishops and a knight mate the king, even without the queen. Beautiful. Instead, if he would have played king to g3, who can tell me what would have been the beautiful finish? Yes? Bishop has two checkmates. Correct. The bishop would have done it this time. This reminds me of the famous game, bishop f3, bishop f3. f3, three, and then bishop f3. f3. Yes. Exactly. And mate. A beautiful, beautiful finish. Excellent. This is one position. I always like to do one game, one position, and some one other thing. So let's take a look at this end game. We look at this position, and we know you guys don't really play many end games. I know that. But this is just a very nice idea in an end game. Something that's really, really worth knowing. In this position, we can see that each side has a knight, and each side has six pawns. And right now, the black position looks really good. He has a beautiful chain of, pawn, chain of pawns here. And white has kind of funny <coughs> pawns, double pawns, and all that. The knight on d1 looks like a real terrible piece. How many moves can I make with this knight without losing it? No. Zero is correct. If I go here, I lose it. If I go here, I lose it. In the meantime, the black knight is attacked by the white king. And where is it going to go? can go here, it can go here, it can go here, it can go here. It looks like it is almost trapped. Maybe he has to go back, yeah. So let's pretend that we are black in this position. What should we play? Use your imagination in this position. Think to yourself, if I said black to move and win, then you will know, oh wow, that has to be a really serious move here. Because if we were to win, and ask yourself, win, win how? Is there going to be a checkmate here? 
Do you think the knight is going to mate the white king that has like 10 legal moves? No. So we have to think, how are we going to win? Who could tell me in words, without even seeing the moves, without even seeing the plans? Use your imagination. If black is going to win, how is he going to win? Either he's going to win material, or what else? Uh, yes? Red shirt, yes? You, yes? Well, I mean, you could check the king, but then the question is what's going to happen with the knight? After check and the king goes to e2, I'm attacking your knight. And probably your knight has to hide all the way here, right? I'm not sure about that. Besides, he has a very good continuation. But first answer my question. One of you answer my question. How are you going to win? It's not going to be by checkmate right now. So what you, what's going to happen? Tell me. Do you want to get one of your pawns to where? To the queening square. You want to queen one of your pawns. If one of your pawns make it to the last rank, you're going to be, make it a queen. Right now, it's not easy, I promise you. If you push the pawns, it's not going to work right now. But Black used all of his imagination, and he managed to create exactly that. Knight to c3, what a surprising move. Some of you might say, I see the faces of some of you, like, Aviv, are you feeling well? You just gave up a knight for a pawn, what? But yes, I'm feeling perfectly fine. The point is like that. First of all, my threat is to take your knight that can't move and can't be defended. That's one. Two, if you take with the knight and I take with the pawn, I'm attacking your pawn. When the pawn takes, my pawn is just going to run all the way to the queen square. And that's also what happened in the game. In the game he played, pawn takes, he tried it. And a4, who is going to stop the a pawn? I don't know, it's going to be very tough. Very tough, you cannot stop it. So he played, <coughs> pawn takes here. Now he's really hoping that if the pawn starts running too, too soon, then the knight is going to come here and catch it. But black simply took back, and he said, no, 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 knight, you're not coming here. And now there is no hope. You can try this move. What else, if you take here, I take back and the pawn just marches in. Can't stop it. So he tried to move c3. Again, he's hoping maybe the pawn is going to take on c3, or maybe the pawn is going to take on b3, and then the knight is just going to be on time to stop it. But Black simply said, listen, I have only one idea. I want a new queen. And he played a3. Can this pawn be stopped? No. no. Nope. And therefore, what did White do? Resigned. He resigned. Yeah, he said, I don't want to play down a queen against my knight, so he resigned. 